Hey, 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 my name is Paulson, and welcome to the SGA Matthias Matthias. We shall see what chapter 13 has for us. The beginning of it now. Both her consciousness and body floated in the air. The ever continuous sensation of rising, rising went on for a while longer until she finally landed in her determined spot. The first thing to fill her vision was a field of flowers. Suddenly she had seen, one, seen ones before. The hail of affectionate love welcomed Rahimura to its confines with blooming flowers. Again. It seemed like the place of her damnation did not change. The brisk atmosphere and the scent of flowers remained the same as before. The light breeze gently caressed her cheeks, and as such she could not keep disappointment away from her heart. Nothing had changed. The picture was worth a thousand words. Ra shook her head, casting the dark thoughts away. Now was not the time for the little thoughts. Things had changed, and she would prove it. Believing that she was not invited here without reason, she stood up out of her own volition. She took a step on the large ground and looked about the paradise one more time. Fell a falling flower petals. The scenery seemed as gentle as always, the air carrying the scent of earth, flowers and honey. A hell that looked like paradise. Anyone would mistake it for heaven before tasting the brunt of its true nature first hand. Alfheim was that beautiful and at the same time terrifying to the bone. At the very least, it was bad enough for her to never wish to come here again. It would turn excessive love into malice, affection, love, the inability to give something up, the refusal to forgive, a whirlpool of misery bred by all such emotions. This was a graveyard birthed by love, be it excessive or deficient, a night tangible sorrow filled its very every pore. As such, those orphans from before should still be somewhere around. She couldn't find a single soul. The smiling, joyful children who kept repeatedly dying did not exist in this place. She could figure why Shramer wouldn't be around, but why not one else? The priest, their substitute father, was similarly nowhere in sight. Raphael like a lone flower in the entire garden. Strange. This was an eternal torture chamber of affection and hate. No emotions or obsessions could come into being without having target and deuce. It made little sense for her to be here alone. But her confusion soon changed to conviction. <laughs> Who did she think uh, of upon entering the castle? Who did she wish to address? Who did she even in mind as she fell into the paradise? There was but one person in her mind, and that was why she found herself here. Her scheme moved along the right track. There was nothing strange about her current situation. She inhaled the breath, stealing her resolve. Come Isaac. I want to talk to you with you. Let's talk to each other. As she addressed the flower petals, the the wind and abrupt change contorted the sky. The emptiness momentarily ruptured and the young, yet imposing boy emerged from the rift. Beneath his clean, colorful garments, his skin was white as milk. There was a certain dignity and eminence to his bearing that did not suit his age. Both his eyes sparkled gold. There was no taking of motion in those vessels of glass. He clearly did not regard Rhea as a fellow human being. There was a look one gave to insects or stalls. He merely glanced at the rubble and noisy and ant out of many, with utmost indifference. That was doubtless how he saw her, and so it didn't make much sense for him to answer her call. As such, Koi Teregia Imakara Lushto Kashi Sura 
父様の世界をお前が生むのだ持ってグラズヘイムに溶けよ His answering words ordered her to comply. Ras thoughts and consternations meant nothing to him. The imperious tone of his command reminded her of his pro progenitor. But she knew that much from his start. Everything but Isaac's existence converged to that one point. He who originated from this crowd of powerful witchcraft possessed no gaps or instability. He was not a construct her words alone could ever sway. He was the perfect engine of the devil's castle. The power unit and the supervisor in one. His mind was not of the kind to change in a mere day or two. He carried out his procedures with utmost uninform uh, uninformity, equally and without limit. The eternal engine could manage hell precisely because it was unchanging. Yet Ra felt that her words could reach him. A proof of that lay in what he had unconsciously uttered. She most definitely felt his color faintly trembling the moment the castle swallowed her. Ne, Isaac. As such, she addressed him in a tone so calm it surprised even herself. A simple enough question. Her voice, its echo ringing clearer than ever before, pierced the boy's chest. Isaac said nothing, remaining silent as a stone. And who could blame him? He would never answer a foolish question. There was no need, nor did he possess a function to. Confirmation and denial were both equal as a response. There was nothing odd about his impregnable demeanor. If anything Ra's insistence to ask a question she already knew the answer to could be labelled for far more strange. As such, her words seemingly affected nothing at all on the exterior. The core of the devil castle regarded the girl's meaningless words in silence. The answer to that question meant nothing to the two, who were but mere instruments to emanate hell onto the physical realm. Yet what about the interior? Did they not send ripples, no matter how small, along the surface of his heart's serene lake? Who was his father? The answer was obvious. Only one name danced at the tip of his tongue. The mystery that had long shrouded the framework of the Ossian narrative was no longer much of a secret. The gold confirmed it. Isaac, Ein Zonenkind, was both son and heir to the beast. He no longer had a reason to hesitate to proclaim himself as such. There was nothing hindering him anymore, and yet... どう様って、あの人でしょ私も全然一言じゃないけれど、それしか考えられないものね。なら、それはひどいこと。あの人は絶対に、あなたを帰り見たりはしないもの。Why did he not deny her words? He managed to leave from the row his nary and word on his lips. Hydori Hikyoa, but as you are not a mot, told them or eat or motel. I stayed to eat them. So they were Takamika and Mita Shisendish can何もかも飲み込めたりはしないものねそうでしょイザーク he remained in sir, uh, sir, inert as a stone, while the girl's lonely voice crashed upon him like surging waves. It was hard to tell if he was even listening at all. He remained motionless, staring at her with a pair of hollow golden eyes, like a mute doll. So. Yet the answer reached her all the same. Those eyes saw nothing. Even his own mother was just another brick to his castle, an immaterial host who carried him for a few months inside her belly. That outlook mimicked Reinhardt Hedrich perfectly. 
I thought there was something wrong to tell him no matter what. あなたを見ているハイドリヒ教の視線もそれと一緒何も変わらないあなたにとってのリザがあの人にとってのあなたなんだよ皮肉だね自分で証明しちゃったんだどれだけ尽くしても温かい言葉をかけてもらっても可能性なんかないって血のつながりなんて関係ない平等な価値観に揺らぎはない The rules had merely been switched. Much like his son remained unfeeling towards his mother's death, the father felt nothing for his son. He would forever remain a mere gear, a lifeless part of the mechanism. あなたの思想あなたの認識それこそが誰にも愛されない証明なの f r a n d h e a r t Hedry would not give even his son a second glance. He prized and treasured all things in the world with absolute equality. Like father, like son, they sank. Rank true indeed. The mind of a devil that failed to find true value in the entire cosmos. Ravaged by a hunger to devour all, yet unable to achieve a single thing. Yet Isaac did not even bat an eye at her words. His golden eyes putting even the flowers in the background to shame with their luster regarded her in a complete silence. As if asking if that was everything she wished to say. Was his interior a frozen lake or a seething inferno? Or could it be that he lacked it altogether? With even that question left unanswered, he remained passive and silent as the grave. He exhibited no change whatsoever, almost as if waiting for Rhea to continue. だからあの人は、ハイドリヒ教は勝てないよ。勝つのは絶対。藤井君。ヘルフェル。一番重要で、大切にしなければいけない相手を愚かにしてるもの。全部同じだから、重要なものへ意識を割り振れない。Why, why, why would you tell him that? He would simply press their own words, driven by an insatiable hunger without ever discovering his limits. And to even perceive the existence of others. Dude! Isaac finally broke his stance in response to that most absurd of notions. His condescending voice drove her through the air like mode. It was la not like the accusations moved him. He her feelings did not penetrate his being. It was merely the result of him growing confused as to why anyone would spout something so absurd, and his lips parted before he knew it. A conversation came to be between the two. What an incredible fool! In that moment, his golden eyes gazed upon not an instinct but an utter fool. だからどうした父様は黄金は無敵だ破れることなどないウィルシーアバウトデッウィルシーアバウトデッ従前ではない全力を出せぬならば負けるまさかそれこそ無双だ幼稚な誰事に過ぎんだろう an ant could exert all its strength, but that would hardly make it a legendary beast. And no matter how able a bird, it will never fly above the moon. Ano kata o hito no mono sashi de naze hakaru. Sore koso busui da to mada wakaran ka. So what? 
ほんの少し撫でただけで皆平服する誰であろうと例外はない最初から生息域が違うのだ We'll see about that Perfect and flawless Eternal and absolute、yeah. To even ponder the concept of defeat in the presence of such being went beyond merely foolish How could she have been so stupid? Isaac's only conclusion was that the girl's mind must have been reverted by some form of element to have her say such things. So, 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 That man was absolute, not even reason could bend him. Isaac prided himself on being the foundation of such father. There was no doubt of or anxiety in his heart. That was all he needed. To try and compare him to anyone else would be nothing more than an insult. The treasure had been long since decided by fate. It was an inevitability, a certain without doubt. No longer could anyone stop it. Ra found herself momentarily overwhelmed by that delusionless zeal. He was an alley born with an unwavering quill, neither heat nor force could bend it, a mechanism fashioned for that sole purpose. He was different from mere earthly metals, he existed in the realm where arguing human laws and feelings had no meaning. It was equivalent to trying to communicate with a being from another dimension with a human language. There was simply no way it could have gotten through to him. As such developments, Ra secretly hoped for vanished. Like morning mists, nothing could reach him, she could not upset him. As result, she had known beforehand. Out of options, she could be of no use in the end. The conversation had become a mere confirmation of the fact. But one single thing he uttered passed her. That phrase, for some reason, still lingered in her ears. They would extirpate the old world, and for that end, they had to emanate their castle. That fact alone kept her suspicious. The way he phrased it seemed odd, unnatural. Remember, think over those words one more time. He even said the word would be painted over. As if he was talking about a picture. Shikarida. <laughs> Purification, washing dirt away, so that was what puzzled her. She simply could not connect the emanation of hell with the concept of cleansing. Wait a second, that was still strange. She was about to ask another question before promptly stopping herself. Her thoughts plummeted through the depths of her consciousness, comprehension spreading through her like a drop of ink. She began to tremble, she did not wish to comprehend it, an absurd truth was taking shape within her mind. All would become gold, the inheriting of the throne, the purification of the world. All those words converted to a single point, and answered that transcended all human comprehension. The mere thought of which rendered her completely and thoroughly speechless. One who had attained the Beria degree could momentarily overwhelm the loss of the world with their craving. There was a slight difference between the how hegemony and transcendence functioned, but that one fact stayed true in both cases. They would both reverse the rules of the world. One's consciousness would strip, outstrip the restraints of physical laws. Then what about an even higher degree? Atsiluch. Emanation. If an intermittent effect flowed out from within one's mind the world outside, what consequences would that have? The old world would be washed clean away. As if purified, the new law would constantly amplify until it filled everything. In that case, there was but one answer to it all. Chaos 
Her conclusion was so close, and his hope that it took all her strength to even put it into words. The other's golden eyes lit up with a condescending glint, as if mocking her for taking so long to realize it. She felt lightheaded. Her body trembled so much that Ralph almost felt like it no longer belonged to her. Assimilate the whole world to one's craving. Expand one's own rule throughout the whole cosmos. What the hell was that? When did this become a creation myth? お前たちは断崖の先に答えを求めている。ならば、それを絶対の法則として流れ出させ、旧秩序を塗り替える。一掃して消し去ってしまう。すなわち、大代わりだよ、テレジア。Seeming good reading Ra's mind like an open book, the boy answered her unvoiced question, effectively shattering her final hope. She almost felt the voice mocking her, declaring that she could no longer even pray to God. その行いを繰り返すことにより、この世界は成り立っている。それはお前がよく知る今の世界も変わらない。唯一にして絶対の方だ。別段珍しいことでもない。無二の強者がこの世の有様を決定づけ、百の輩はそれに平伏して従うの
、今度はおのがその質量にとらわれる。そうだ、この世界は間違っている。我ら皆、例外なく壊したがるのはそういう理屈だ。それが我々のいる世界の現状。勝者は放食した勝利に嘆き、敗者は英語を続く敗北に同国するしかない閉じた円環。擦り切れるまで再生を続ける、終わりなき映写機構。クレイジーバスターズ。わかっただろう、テレジア。なぜ我々がこの世界をゲットーと呼ぶのか。そして、黄金が流出に至る、その意義が。She had no reply to throw back at him. They truly were beings far transcending her own insignificant self. Their case was fixed on matters beyond her meager comprehension. It was only natural that they cared little for sacrificing the lives of a single city. And why should they? Their ceremony meant remaking the entire world. A few lives here and there meant nothing when compared to the scope of their goal. Well, I wouldn't agree that they were meant nothing at all, but whatever. <sighs> Such was the reasoning behind her, uh, her, their universal love. This would be unterrible, as if she had not been exposed to enough despair already. And she was. Like Nidhogg feeding on the roots of Yggdrasil. They would embark upon and devote themselves to their mission with marble wheel, the chirping of pebbles and insects, and amusing background noise to fill their ears. Mass murderers that taunted the world at large, their hearts beating for the sole purpose of overthrowing the current order. I wouldn't say she has anything to be proud about. Unquestionable and supreme, showing neither hesitation nor a heightening of his spirit, his act would step forward her like a ghastly apparition from a horror story. I'd refuse. テレジア、お前に不備は許されん。我ら血肉の一辺までも、父様のためにのみ存在するのだ。I bet that's not what she's thinking. I wouldn't think that at all if I were in her shoes. 役目を果たせ。老気せよ増年金と。不臭の漂うグズの思想などしてくれるな。He stood before her now, proclaiming that they would find become the true heart of their father. They would turn to the mechanism of the castle, inciting the advent of a comet that would paint over the cosmos. He declared it as fact, and without a shred of motion to color his tone, still surprised actually that he. He doesn't react at all the, to the fact, to the facts that were revealed before. I thought at least a bit he would be changed. He rushed to, reached out to her. The moment he touched her, Ratu would become no more than a mere cog with the mechanism. We don't know that. Uh, don't, um, we don't want that. Ra Himura would irrevocably turn to a part of the Devil's Castle. Don't let it come from her. She observed a slowly encroaching end to her very existence with impassive eyes. Rhea, now is not the time to shut yourself out. You cannot allow this to happen. She wasn't blind to them, nor did she decide to give up, but she wasn't looking for the opportunity to attack. Why not? Rhea, you have to do something like that. So please. Do it. She remained immobile because she had been too deep in thought. What? She did not resist because she had already made her resolve. Okay. Yeah, Isaac. Are you retarded? 
流出によって世界は塗り替えられる今は基地間で塗りつぶされているからハイドリシキョはこれから地獄を流れ出させようとしているんだよね His fingers drew ever closer a c o m m a n d by an affirming silence her words gained her no time only moments remained till her fate would be sealed They were a hair's breath away from her skin. i k a s u t s w a l l o w e d her demon, they touched it, and did a moment. The words made Isaac's fingers come to a halt. Science descended upon the two. It seemed as if Ra had cast a magic spell of some sort. This was the first time her words had an effect on Isaac. The resulting silence was not that of affirmation. He lost himself in thought, looking for an answer to the question. He did not, had no actual reason to reply to an insect, yet the question itself bothered him just the same. After all, it was not really a question but a statement. There was something clearly wrong with the causality of it all. An obvious inquiry, yet he, with his hands still dangling motionless in the air, simply could not find a satisfying answer. The truth and veracity of the emanation he had declared. Why did Reinhard Heydrich know, know of this apotheosis of sorcery? Upon deeper consideration, it was certainly a question worth pondering. For one, it was quite evident he could not have learned it through his own means. During his mortal life, the Golden Beast was an official to the guest, feared among his contemporaries as the hangman. He was not originally a sorcerer like Maleus. He could not possibly know about emanation. Well, come on, the answer is easy. Come on, the answer is easy, right? Then again, it was he they were talking about. It was possible he could have noticed and figured it out of his own.、Uh, it appeared to coincide with everything that happened to him down the road. Could it have led him to realize the true meaning of every kite? But then why did he talk of it as a fo- no- of, of knowledge? And not as something born of conviction. It most certainly seemed like he knew the truth rather than merely suspecting it. As if he had seen it with his own eyes. As if he was recounting someone else's words. Even if he could change the world by merely snapping his fingers, nothing would happen if he never thought of doing that. An omnipotent entity, no different from a mountain or a star, as long as it remained motionless. And he could not have had that many opportunities to run into witchcraft, as he was busy with his work for the government. He might have absorbed all the information known to men like a boundless sponge, but he could not know of something he had never encountered. Oh, I think he, he knows now. And how did he come to know this grand deed? The actual concept of filling the world with one's craving. Who told him? Why did he even know the final conclusion of it all? How could anyone convey this information as knowledge? Only those that had been to the end of the world could speak of it. Even if someone figured it out, no one could speak of it as a certain fact. Only the, those that knew with certainty could claim it to be truth. Not as mere speculation, but as a fact regarding a nation. Overwriting the very law governing the world. Only someone who had actually carried out such a deed could ever know of it as a fact. There was one such thing being. The cause of it all had been hiding the ranks from the very beginning. The kindred of the be- beast. The only one to be graced by his genuine smile. It was none other than he who had told everyone about the ghetto, to spare the recipitating the birth of the obscene round table. <sighs> only one man fit the bill. Ra felt a slight tremble run along the castle. A ripple of indecipherable minuteness. Was it anger or contempt? 
is a once again fell into a deadly silence. This time Rama intended, having felt the change in the boy. They were all in the palm of Buddha's hand from the very beginning. A giant warship that could only follow a predetermined path. Its personnel were sublime and all its facilities cutting edge. It could not pass a sea that had split apart. And its destination would be upset if the stars in the sky realigned. Calculated guidance masquerading as free advancement. And of course, nothing could stand in this way on that path. He nonetheless remained impassive despite learning the truth. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. His fate in gold's eternal luster was absolute. Lord Hedrick was invincible. The conviction of his hair and loyal vassal would never waver on that single point. Eh, not interested. Uh, nah, he must work for that himself only. Now he had even bigger reason to absorb the girl. He had to feel his duty at all costs. They had to be prepared to face their new enemy in the best way possible. His heart trembled with excitement at the advent of their true enemy. There's a lot to worry about. But that's precisely what I had to stop, no matter what. Hell was a place for the dead, it would not exclude him. No matter how much of a contrast his existence was, he would incessantly resurrect in the new world. He would doubtless use the chance to traverse it like that with naught but join his heart. Their hell was too indiscriminant and allowed for no exceptions. Her statement left Isaac deep in thought. Again, he failed to notice that the very act of pondering and adapting was unbefitting the gear of a perfect mechanism. His hope for his father's perfect victory was merely a pretext, used to direct his thanks at the sole being in the world whom he regarded with malice. Yet he was not even conscious of the very anger scorching his heart. Having been brought up in the palace of the dead, he did not possess the capacity for judgment like other people. He himself, as well? He nodded. Was the shadow that momentarily flickered inside his puppy's love or hatred? And coincidentally, <sighs> hole in the cosmos, center of the hole of the cosmos, is probably in Suwahara city somewhere. Do once the two world clashed, a whole space covered by no laws would mentally manifest. If they could defeat him there, if they could push the old god out of the entire cosmos, that was the only place where defeating him would not result in the complete destruction of the world. A simple answer, yet a most challenging task indeed, and to accomplish it they first had to. <laughs> Uh, 
Renever adapted the term Fuji would also rise to the degree of emanation. She succumbed to the fingers touching her forehead without a shred of anxiety in her heart. So, not a so de are. Kino had a serno naraba. Sorry, the come on. She wasn't talking to you, idiot. An arrogant and one sided appropriation of existence. He was about to absorb her humor, his core as nourishment, placing her under the complete dominion of his will. Things a girl should not have should not be saying to anyone. A calm and serene voice answered him. He was not the only one with a mysterious mission. She too would do more than just believe, she would fight. Isaac had a plan, but so did she. They aimed for different goals, but in this one instance, the means to achieve them overlapped. As such, she did not mind being taken away to the same battle he fought. The place she needed to reach, where she could be of use. Isaac regarded her in complete silence as her consciousness slowly faded away. His gaze betrayed not a shred of motion. He merely wished for her to be of use like a tool. And so Rhea plunged into the darkness. She met the crucible of countless wailing souls. Then she regained form, conscious of being molded in the core of the castle. A bridge in the shape of Rhea Himura. Unable to move, she was slowly stuffed into it like a puzzle piece. Her limbs became cocks and gears, her heart an engine, her head a data processor. Her throat turned to wires, but not before a final fragment of human speech left it. <laughs> Creaking circuits and a hoarse whisper, the name of her beloved. She couldn't utter a word of gratitude. Her faint, barely audible voice seemed to be begging for aid. She trapped a bitter smile at her own disgraceful display that her lips would not move. She sank deeper and deeper to the crucible, her consciousness dissipating in nothingness. And. Chapter 13 Acta es Fabula. We know what's the title of it, so let's end the episode. For now, hope you enjoyed it, and we will be back to where Brennage in the next one. Which I will not actually record the same day because I have a headache. <laughs> Anywho, for now, hope you enjoyed it. I think I repeated myself right now. Well, no, doesn't matter. Uh, and hopefully, I will see you tomorrow as well. Bye-bye.